with Ben Bolker from McMaster University in Canada. Um, which part of Canada? Ontario. So Ontario. Yeah, yeah right. And uh, Mark Brewer from BIOS in Aberdeen. In Aberdeen. So thank you both for, for, for joining us. So um, you, you gave complimentary talks at, at ISEC. We're at International Statistical Ecology Conference um, in Montpellier. Um, uh, ben was a, a keynote speaker uh, talking about statistical machismo. Um, could you just um, give us a sort of a, a brief, the, the, the two minute version? Sure, the, the two minute version, it's a term that, that Brian McGill coined for ecologists using fancy methods when they don't really need to to impress the reviewers or their bosses or their colleagues and in particular people insisting on fancy, people like reviewers insisting on fancy methods when they're not necessary. So my talk sort of took that and turned it around for more of a, a developer's audience saying well what kinds of methods, what kinds of, when should we be using, when should we, we be developing fancy methods, when, are, when is it when are there big improvements we should be making and when are we just doing clever little things that we enjoy that aren't actually all that useful to practicing ecologists. So, so, why, do you, so why, do you, why, does, why do you think this happens? So this is from a statistical perspective? Right, from, um, a, from so a statistician's perspective, really. Yeah. It's sort of a, a cultural thing and you know, it's fun mm. and it's hard, you know, just, just as with ecologists, it's hard to publish a paper that says the same old methods will do just fine here. Mm. It's, it's much easier to publish a paper that says I have this fancy new method right. that addresses this problem, but if it only, you know, if it changes the results by 5% and the mm. standard errors were 25% to begin with, mm. then again, it's, it's, it's enjoyable, but yeah. it's not really worth somebody else taking their time with it. Yeah, right. So like, I think a, a term I've come across is methodological novelty. So when you're sort of reviewing a paper for a statistics journal, one of the key criteria is, is, is it methodologically novel? So in other words, is it quite different right. um, and innovative compared to existing right. methods? And that's, you know, that's, that's what you want for a statistics journal, hmm. but maybe it, again, maybe it's only scratching your itch. Maybe it's not actually something that people hmm. need to use. One of the problems is that the only real way to know if, the only, hard and fast way to know if you need a new method is to try the new method and see if it makes a difference or not. Indeed. By which time you've already gone to all the trouble of trying the new method. Mm -hmm. Somebody who's very experienced might look at it and say, you know, I don't think that's going to, might have a, a very good guess mm -hmm. about whether it's worth the trouble. Mm -hmm. But you can't, if somebody says, you know, some reviewer says, you must do this, then you must do that. And then after you've done that, you can go back and say, mm -hmm. guess what, I was right. I didn't need to well, do that. One of the examples I talked about was exactly that scenario because somebody was suggesting that we should have used mixed models in a situation where we, where we shouldn't do. But it actually went through several iterations of review and it was only at the final stage where I actually did all the analyses I didn't think would work to actually show them that it didn't work. So that's the extra effort that we had to expend, to expend simply to state what we thought was obvious in the first place. Right. But it's, I mean, it is a... It's a, it's, it's a judgment call, mm. but I think the, the point is that some people are biased mm. towards the fancy methods. Very much so. Mm. Yeah. So do you mean, you mean in ecology journals now? Yeah. So, so, okay, so the statisticians have pressure to produce fancy new methods to get into the good stats journals, and the ecologists have pressure to use fancy new methods. Um, to get into the good ecology journals, like is that oh, think, that's kind of over? No, I, no, I think that's about right. I think, I think that's. Right. I mean, I think it's a kind of a double whammy. I mean, if you if you analyse an ecological data set and you both get an interesting ecological answer and you get an interesting statistical twist, it's somehow seen as, as better, even if the better thing to have done would have been to stuck to the, what we call an older method. Mm, yeah. So, so Mark, you, so you, you mentioned the review process. You, you, you touched on the review process in your talk. Was are there any other sort of aspects to? to what you presented that you, you think sort of, uh, I guess, complemented what, what, what Ben was talking about? Um, yes, I think so. I, I mean, um, I mean, my, my talk talked about other different things. I mean, I, I talked about with the fact that we statisticians were kind of under attack from all sorts of different people. Um, there are data scientists who, who, I mean, not all data scientists, but some data scientists seem to think that what we're doing is, is old-fashioned and old-hat, in, in a similar vein to, 
to um, what some ecologists uh, do, because I think there's uh, some, some ecologists like to use uh, machine learning type methods and, the data, and are being sold on the data science idea, and that's that's fine, and I think there's a lot of good things that we can learn, but I don't think that means that these methods are supplanting mm. or replacing what we know. They they should just be used ju judiciously in in situations where they're where they're necessary. Mm. I mean, I, I think the ironic thing. I tell this to my students a lot, is that you're, if, some, if, if a reviewer knows very little statistics, they'll just take your word for it. If they know a lot of statistics, they'll look at what you did and they'll say, okay, you know, you did this and there's this little hole, but I can understand that that's very difficult and I see why you didn't do that and I can see that, you know, it makes sense to not bother. You run into trouble with people who know a little bit of statistics and maybe more than they think they know, more think they know more than they know, because they're not willing to just leave it to you, and they don't necessarily have the expertise to, to understand the ins and outs and when it makes a difference. And again, that's, it's not to say that everybody ought to be an expert, it's just you shouldn't, you know, you shouldn't assume that every fancy method is, is necessary and that if you use the fancy methods, there won't be any more assumptions violated. Indeed. I mean, it's quite tempting, I suppose. People go to talks and they, they hear a fancy new method and any, in one situation it's proven to work and be beneficial, but then that doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's always going to be so. I mean, I think there are some authors who make overstate the claims for their, their new methods, as in terms of generalizability, perhaps. I'm mm. sure in specific instances they're, they're excellent, but we just need to be wary. I mean, as a statistician, I do spend more time of my, more part of my life than I like being told that I don't know much about statistics by ecologists. I find in other disciplines, such as soil science, where the, the levels of statistical expertise are lower, uh, that, that this, as you say, this, this fits in with what you're saying, that I don't get that problem so much. So I guess, um, I guess what can people, people do? I, I guess, so, so the statisticians have this pressure to, to uh, develop fancy methods that might not necessarily be useful, or um, rather than focusing on more modest developments that are more generally useful. And the ecologists sort of feel this pressure to use fancy new methods in their papers. I guess I'm wondering what people can do about it. Well, I mean, they can they can double they can check their assumptions. I mean, I, I there are there have been a number of good papers. And which which at least provide some support, you know, cover for, you know, my data are approximately normal. I'm going to go ahead and use an ANOVA, and you can. There are there are papers you can cite that say that's okay. Now it's again, it's it's not all one thing or another. One thing I was saying in in my talk was, I think that. There are a lot of cases where generalized linear models, which are a little fancier than ANOVA and regression, are really useful. I would probably, as a reviewer, I would probably, you know, I would probably recommend it, but not insist on it. You know, or, or if they didn't want to use it, I'd say, well, you have to test the robustness of your results in some other way. But trying, you know, trying not to be absolute, right. and trying to, to get a sense of whether you think it's going to, whether you think it really matters to the conclusions or not. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I think, for, for my part, it's it's a case of. I mean, it's good to be challenged. It's good to be questioned. Mm. And I suppose if I were to be critical of myself in, in the situations where I've had reviews I've not agreed with, I would say, perhaps we didn't make it clear enough mm. why we'd chosen the simpler method mm. that we had done, yeah. and making clear that the reason would be that the the assumptions of that model were were satisfied, mm. and therefore going to a higher level, if you like, wasn't necessary. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, that's, that's um, good advice from both of you. Yeah, so from an, an ecologist's point of view, um, being careful to justify the method you used yep. and, and showing that it was appropriate for the data. Yeah, um, and I guess from a statistician's point of view, I guess one thing I can think of, it's the same thing, it's been clear. Uh, and so if, if um, it's because statistical journals don't just look at novelty, they do also look at usefulness and whether the method is useful. Nobody wants to publish big fancy methods that do nothing. Um, and so um, that, I have seen papers rejected from, um, from a few sort of uh, stats journals. I mean, they, they all do it like on the basis of being, being useless. Or, or, or actually, that's a bad some, way to say it. Uh, not not, not, not uh, showing that it's going to be useful. 
Um, and so the, it's up to the author to be clear about why their method is relevant and useful to, to applied people. And, and yeah, everybody wins out of, out one, out of that thing. One of the things I said in my talk was you should be, you should at least be either <laughs> rigorous or useful. Yeah. And what I, you know, if you have a really rigorous method, mm. then go publish it in, you know, in a, in a theoretical statistics yeah. journal. And someday somebody will pull it off the shelf and say, oh, I can think of a way to make this useful. Mm. But it's, it's, the, it's the, you know, this isn't useful enough to get into a methods journal and it's not rigorous enough to get into a theoretical journal. Mm. Well then, you know, you're wasting trouble. your time, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, but I think even in the, the big theoretical journals, um, they, they do still care about usefulness. And so if you can get both of them, I mean, that's what the, the oh. big papers in your Annals of Stats and... And MEE. <laughs> you know, Journal of American Statistical... You know, the, the big journals and the, the big papers, they are the ones that hit the, the double whammy. Yeah, because yeah, that's what we'll gets the citation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I guess anything, anything else? Not the top of my head. Cool. <laughs> thank, thank you very much. It's, thanks. it's been a pleasure. Thank you, uh, thanks for your talks and, and for your time uh, you. today. Thank you very much.